Many cells have a particular structure and function. We call these specialized cells, like these red blood cells. Today, we're gonna to look at six examples of specialized cells in both animals and plants. Let's get started. Download your free study along workbook for this video and others in the cell biology topic. Just visit emmaditichi.com for your free copy. When a new organism is growing, initially all of the cells are the same, i.e. they are undifferentiated. As the organism develops, the cells do differentiate. This means that they change by developing different subcellular structures. We'll look at examples of these in just a moment. We call these cells that have developed the subcellular structures specialized cells, as they are able to carry out a particular function, or that's just a fancy word for a job. This will be in the tissue, organ, or whole organism in which they are found. We're going to look at three specialized animal cells. You need to be able to explain how the structure of a cell relates to its function. So we'll cover this for each cell and you can expect to be given some information to use for these types of questions. So first up, we've got a sperm cell and its function is to reach and fertilize an egg cell. Can you spot any structures that would help it do this? Well, first up, we've got a teal that helps it swim or move through the reproductive system to the egg. Then its midpiece has got many mitochondria to release energy for the movement of the teal. Up here in the head, we've got what we call an acrosome, which contains digestive enzymes to break down the egg and allow the sperm cell to penetrate it. And of course, we need a large nucleus to contain DNA, which can then be passed on to create offspring. Down below, we've got some muscle cells. Their function is to contract and relax, causing movement. Can you spot anything that would help them do this? Well, over here, you can see that we've got lots of tiny little pink things, which are mitochondria. These release the energy needed for the contractions. Over here, we've also got some special proteins. These cause contractions by sliding across each other. And finally, these cells can also store glycogen. This is broken down into glucose to allow respiration to happen. You're going to learn more about respiration in the bioenergetics topic, so don't worry too much about that now. Finally, up here, we've got a nerve cell. Its function is to carry electrical impulses around the body. What can you spot that would help it do this? Well, this is called an axon, and it's very long to allow the impulse to be carried along it. And over here, you can see we've got lots of these little spiky things, which are called dendrites. Dendrites allow the nerve cell to connect to lots of other nerve cells. And finally, we've got nerve endings. These release chemical messengers that will cause an electrical impulse to be carried in the next nerve cell. So the nerve endings have lots of mitochondria to release the energy needed to make these chemical messengers. Now we've got our specialized plant cells. We're starting with the root hair cell and its function is the absorption of water and mineral ions from the soil. What can you spot that would help it carry out this job? Well, first of all, this little protrusion provides a large surface area for the greater absorption of the water and mineral ions. We've also got a large permanent vacuole. This speeds up osmosis which overall will bring more water into the cell. And again, we've got lots of these guys, many mitochondria. These are gonna be for the active transport of mineral ions. And you'll learn a lot more about this in the active transport part of this topic later on. Next up, we've got the xylem. These cells are responsible for the movement of water and mineral ions up from the roots through the rest of the plant. What can you see that would help them do this? Well, you can see that they form long hollow tubes, so the cell walls have been removed, which allows the easy movement of water and mineral ions through them. 
they also have spirals of lignin. This allows it to strengthen the cells to withstand the pressure of the water moving through it and it also supports the plant as it doesn't have a skeleton. Our sixth and final specialised cell is the phloem cell. What can you spot that would help it move dissolved food up and down the plant? Well, first of all, you can see that the cell wall has been replaced by these funny little things called sieve plates. And just like a sieve, they've got holes in them to allow dissolved food to move easily up and down through them. We've got another type of cell here, which is called a companion cell, and it's adjacent to the phloem cells. These have lots of mitochondria, and they release the energy that allows the dissolved food to be moved up and down through the plant. Okay, let's have a go at a quick question. There's just one here. Read it, give the question a go in your head or on some paper, and press play to go through the answer. Ready? Beta cells are found in the pancreas. Their function is to produce insulin, a protein that helps to regulate blood sugar levels. Look at this image of a beta cell and explain how it is adapted for its function. Well, hopefully you spotted that the beta cell has many ribosomes. Those are the little black dots. These carry out protein synthesis. That's something you just need to know from earlier. And the cell can therefore produce lots of insulin, which in the question we were told is a protein. So that's how you make your link between the two. And there they are. How did you do? In the next three videos, we're going to be looking at how substances move in and out of cells. Click here to get started with diffusion. And thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below or over there on my icon. Thanks and bye.